Okay. Um, what I've done here is I've just thrown up a, a very, very common example of a six mark question that you'd get about structure and bonding. Um, it says here, magnesium and oxygen react together to form magnesium oxide. Describe the structure and bonding of the substances before the reaction and after the reaction. Now, note, what you've not been told is whether or not it's um, covalent, ionic, or uh, metallic bonding. You haven't been told that. Well, you kind of have, because the clue is in what the substance is. Look here. Magnesium is the first substance. Magnesium is a metal. Now, if you see something and you don't know straight away if it's a metal or a non-metal, let me remind you that it's really easy just to look at your periodic table. Now, your periodic table is going to be split a little bit like this. Anything on this first bit of the periodic table, they're all metals. Okay? The next bit's a little bit more complicated. Basically, if you start drawing a line, so like this on your periodic table, like this, everything this side of the line is metal. And everything this side of the line is a non-metal. Uh, and also remi rem remember that hydrogen is a non-metal as well. So look at where its position is on the periodic table. If you are unsure, I don't want anybody guessing anything. You get a periodic table for free in the exam. So there is no reason why you can't decide whether or not an element is a metal or a non-metal. Magnesium is metal. Magnesium is sort of found down here uh, in group two, uh, like so kind of the second row down on, uh, on group two. All right. Oxygen then, what's that? Well, oxygen is found about here on the periodic table. Um, so this is a non-metal. How about magnesium oxide? So they form magnesium oxide. That is one substance. Magnesium oxide is a substance made of magnesium and oxygen. Well, it contains magnesium, which is a metal. And it contains oxygen, which is a non-metal. It contains both. Well, how does this help us? Well, it's super, super easy. If it's a metal, metal only, that's metallic bonding. And if anyone gets this wrong, they deserve to be shot because look, the word metal is in metallic bonding. There is absolutely no one who should get this one wrong ever because the name metal is in the word metallic bonding. It's impossible to forget. So if you do forget it, don't. That's a stupid thing to do. Um, right. Second of all, oxygen, non-metal. If it's non-metals only, then that's covalent bonding. Now, that's not to say that there's only one thing there, okay? Carbon dioxide, for example. Carbon dioxide is CO2. More than one atom there, but carbon is a non-metal. Oxygen is a non-metal. So therefore, only non-metals. Therefore, this is covalent bonding. Right, finally, if you've got both metal, both metal and non-metal, then this is ionic bonding. So we have ionic bonding between a metal and a non-metal, uh, covalent bonding, non-metals only, Metallic bonding, metals only. Learn it because it will come up. I promise you, 
This will come up in the exam, wherever you're doing. This is always, always, always in it. Um, so please make sure you realize that. Now we've done this little bit of annotation and I've worked out what everything in it is. Uh, I can now use, I'm just going to erase my notes here. We can now have a go at answering the exam question there. So magnesium and oxygen react together to form magnesium oxide. Uh, describe the structure uh, and the bonding uh, of the substances before the reaction and afterwards. So let's go before. Let's start with magnesium. Okay. Magnesium is a metal. Right. What's the structure like? There are positive metal ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. Okay, there we go. I've just described the structure and bonding of magnesium because magnesium is a metal and all metals are exactly the same. Right, how about oxygen then? Oxygen is a covalent molecule with the formula O2. Now, how do I know that? You just have to know this one. Oxygen is one of the ones you just need to know. If they, uh, if you're asking for structure and bonding for something like oxygen or nitrogen or hydrogen, water, you just need to know those structures and it's a good idea to write them down, maybe even draw them. So you can probably pick up some marks here by drawing the dot and cross diagram. Now remember oxygen is uh, has a double bond. So there are twice as many electrons in the bond here. Now, if you don't know how to draw double bonds, please go back and uh, watch my video on covalent bonding. Uh, just click through onto you, my YouTube channel and you should be able to find it. Uh, just give it a search covalent bonding um, and it will teach you all about how to remember, remind yourself how to do double bonds. So I've drawn this here. That's going to pick me up a couple of extra marks. Uh, uh, so the, uh, the oxygen atoms atoms are joined by a double covalent bond. And I probably want to define what the covalent bond is. Um, a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. Right, what about the rest of it though? Each of those molecules, exhibit weak intermolecular forces. between molecules. So there are those, I'm just saying that there's weak intermolecular forces between each of those molecules. Um, uh, remember it's the weak intermolecular forces that are broken and not the strong covalent bonds. Okay, let's do my next bit. So we need to talk about ionic bonding. When the oxygen reacts with magnesium, the oxygen will get, will lose, what am I saying, the oxygen will gain 
two electrons and the magnesium will lose two electrons. That's showing me I'm explaining what's actually going on there. Maybe I would want to draw a little picture of my magnesium. So we've got my magnesium here. Again, it's a good idea to draw pictures when you're doing things about structure and bonding, because you know a lot of the time you can pick up your marks uh, from the picture itself, because you're kind of describing what's happening through the medium of the picture. Remember, the examiner's looking for what you do know, not what you don't know. They're not trying to catch you out. That you don't get marked down unless something is actually contradictory to the information that you're saying. If you said something like um, uh, covalent molecules have uh, electrostatic forces, that's contradictory. So you would get marked down for that. Um, but you don't get marked down for just things that are wrong. Right. Here was the charge there. Get to minus. Uh, so when the O2 reacts with the magnesium, the oxygen will gain two electrons, the magnesium will lose two electrons. I've drawn my little picture there. It's going to pick me up another mark. Um, and then what can we say? Uh, well, we just need to talk about what happens then. Um, the uh, magnesium 2 plus ions become attracted to the oxygen 2 minus ions and they form a giant ionic lattice. And that is how to answer that question perfectly. Just think about what it is the question is asking. In this case, it's asking about structure and bonding, but it could ask about uh, bonding and properties or structure and properties. Um, think about what the actual chemicals are that you are talking about. So you may need your periodic table. They are well within their rights to ask you about any single metal on that periodic table, and you will need to know that it's a metal. And the only way you can find that out sometimes is by looking at your periodic table. Um, uh, they sometimes do try and catch you out. So they will pick compounds that you have never heard of before, that we've never studied. So it's important that you learn the rules for what's going on rather than the actual points. So don't learn this question. There's absolutely no need. Learn the properties and then apply those properties to every every single question about this that um, I asked. Sorry about my little burp there. Um, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, that's really it for today. Uh, please have a go at the questions. Um, there's uh, a couple of six markers that I really want you to have a go at. Please make sure that those are done. It's really important that you have a go at doing these six mark questions because, um, you know, if you can nail those, then that's going to be a huge amount of marks. Um, this is stuff so easy. Uh, it's only really four things you have to learn. Um, uh, and it, it, it forms, I, I can't express how, how much of the GCSE it it ends up forming because it's in pretty much every single question. Uh, this is like the basic stuff. All right. Have fun, guys. Um, hopefully I, I'll be seeing you soon.